Welcome back. Today we're going to pull out the turnips and the radishes in all of the 12 test beds where we ran our different amendments. Now we know what tastes good and what doesn't, but I'm gonna harvest them because I would like to turn these beds back into regular beds. The experiment is over. I was gonna continue it into spring and I've decided there's no need. I've learned everything I need to learn and I want this space to use for other things. So today I'm just gonna pull the rows of turnips and radishes and then we can reshape the beds later and plant them with something. So that's sad. These are the uh, fish fertilizer. Unfortunately, only got like two applications. I think it would have been much better if it wasn't for that. Those radishes are small for the variety. Little turnips. There's one bed. Okay, lasagna garden. Look at the difference here. That's a little better, huh? <laughs> Holy moly. Organic matter for the win. Let's pull these turnips. Oh yeah, that's a little better. Now this one was growing in the same hole. It never got thinned out and it should have. Look at that. And I bet you that's sweet too. That's beautiful. All right, alfalfa. Now, alfalfa turnips are pretty small for the most part. Some of them obviously didn't get thinned well. Not particularly impressive. However, these radishes have looked pretty good. Well, maybe I picked the biggest ones. Well, that's a pretty good one right there. That's a pretty good one. Not bad. Take a look over here. Do we even bother pulling the 10, 10, 10? I don't even want to eat them. Look at that. That is sad. It's got, look at the, look at the insect damage. It's, it's infested. It's ill, it's chewed up. That is not what you want to see. Those are, it's a complete, it's night and day. Nutrition makes a big difference. So eat your vegetables, kids. Look at how chewed up these are. Those are nasty, weirdly chewed up. Notice that there's not a lot of insect damage or anything on the ones that are grown in the better conditions. Great, I'm gonna go this way. Let's go down here. This is gonna be the only one worth pulling on this row. Okay, so this is Steve Solomon's mix. <laughs> Same time. Okay, here's a little one, but this was next to a large one that we pulled already, and I snuck out another large one and gave it away from here because a friend of mine could not believe how beautiful they looked, and he had to have one. So there we go, there's another one. Let's see what we got here. Turnips, it should have been thinned. Decent looking. Turnip there, weenie one there. Nice big fat one here. And then a little moderate one, even though it wasn't thin. That's not bad. Okay, next row. It's probably not worth pulling. Good to throw in the compost pile. Let's see what we've got here in the earthworm castings. Not that impressive here. And we've got some weenie turnips. Earthworm castings were not enough. Needed more, obviously. Now to the charged biochar. What do we got here? Hey, that's more like it. It's not bad. 
not as big as the lasagna garden ones. Look how nice these turnips look though. These have these are beautiful, beautiful shape, and still some decent greens on them. My greens on many of the other turnips have given up already. So that's not bad. We'll just gather all these guys up here and take them in and eat the ones that are worth eating. I'm not even eating those 10, 10, 10 ones. But the rest of the stuff here, this doesn't matter. Like, let's pull one of these. This uh, this was just treated with Dynagrill once, liquid fertilizer. Not enough. It's not enough. The Dynagrill treatment, liquid fertilizer, oh, I think we did it twice. Compared to soaking biochar in Dynagrill, it's interesting, huh? If you look at this soil, we've got charcoal in it now. The charcoal's kind of crunched up in the soil, mixed through. It makes me want to add it to all of my beds. It's getting blacker. I think it's turning the soil color, getting that terra preta look maybe. You just have to put some broken pottery in there. So there we go. I'm gonna just scrape the edges of these beds. Because these beds are five foot wide, I like four foot wide beds, I'm just gonna take the last foot off of each of them and make the path wider. Take this foot off, take this foot off, and take that last foot off there. This here, the last thing I'll talk about, this cover crop bed, look at how bad the cover crop looks because it wasn't fed with anything. I just threw down rye seed and I threw down peas. It all looks terrible except for this one corner. I don't know if you can tell. Look at how bad it looks over here. Kind of sick, kind of miserable. And then there's one corner where everything is twice as big and it's twice as green. I think someone urinated there in that corner. I'm 100% sure actually. But <laughs> that's amazing. It's just starving, that's the problem. All this stuff is starving. Starving, starving. So it's not worth continuing this thing. Cover crops should be treated like a main crop and fed really well and made very happy so when they get tilled under they put all that nutrition back and they put the extra carbon in and the nitrogen that they fixed or whatever else you're growing them for. But uh, I, I've got to get my, my, my brassicas and stuff in for spring so this is the end and i figured i just wanted to show you what it looked like when we pull all this stuff because it's kind of interesting very big difference and it was a fun experiment so thank you all for joining me be sure to check out the other videos in the experiment including the taste test and how we planned things out and what we used and until next time may your thumbs always be green get up in the morning time making biscuits get up in the middle of the noon day biscuits get up in the afternoon making biscuits Get up in the middle of the nighttime biscuits. Get up in the morning time making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the new day biscuits. Get up in the afternoon making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the nighttime biscuits. I just realized that in the middle of this alfalfa bed, we have a big purple top turnip. I did not plant any purple top turnips. I did not buy any purple top turnip seed. But there it is, a big, ugly purple top turnip. So my guess is that this guy was probably mixed in with the collards that we planted, the seed. Must have skipped because it's right in the middle of the colored row.
I knew there was a turnip that was out of place here, but I did not expect it to be a purple top. That's pretty funny. <laughs>